We're coming. Yeah, welcome, everybody. This is Bill Rayback, and welcome to the Sports Planet. I'm joined tonight by Charlie Hargrave and, of course, the Wilmington legend. Lee Handy. How come Charlie gets high top billing over me? <laughs> I, well, I'm bigger than you. First I time to, I show up, I wanted, to, I, wanted to bring, I wanted to bring the most important guy in lastly. Oh, oh yeah, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, I Lee, see how you are. Lee's going to get accommodation next week. Yeah. I think Obama's flying in the uh, helicopters, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay. That's Either that or it's going to be an air raid. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Lee got his pardon today, so hey, Lee, Lee doesn't pardon? have to go to jail. <laughs> I can't hear you, Charlie. You, you got your pardon today, did yeah, you? I did. Obama? Yeah, I did. Is that like one of those Monopoly cards to get out of jail? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of put deal. that in your wallet and something hard. happens. Uh, we're not on. We're not on. Not over here. Okay. Uh, are we on there? Yes, we're on Okay, there. well, we're we'll not, just, there we go. We'll just keep we're on rolling here as long as we need to. Um, uh, this is the Sports Planet. We are simulcasting on WALH 106.7 in Wilmington. And we are also on CampusNation. Or I'm sorry, not Campus Talk Nation, TV. TalkTV.us. So whatever you want to do, you want to watch it on the Internet or listen to us live, you can do that. Um, guys, we're going to jump into some local scores first and talk about some of the action with the Wilmington, um, East Clinton, Clinton Massey team, Blanchester. And the Lady Hurricanes took a 59-47 to 47, uh, victory over their cross-county rival, East Clinton, the other night. Um, Hurricanes moved to 11-5 and five overall, 7-3 and three in the SCOL. Uh, they play Clinton Massey next. And then the Astros are now five and eleven overall, and two and eight in the league, and they will be playing White Oak um, Saturday at home. Maya Jackson led the Hurricanes with 20 points. Faith Sanderson had nine points, and Caitlin Durbin and Lacey Peterman both had 15 for the Astros. Uh, in other girls' action, we had Chillicothe beating Clinton Massey 49 to 29 Wednesday. Chillicothe's Shawnee Smith led all scores with 16 points, and Osh Brown chipped in 15. Madeline Newton led the Falcons with eight points. The Cavaliers are now 14 and two, as the Falcons have dropped to five and nine. In other action, uh, in the boys' side of things, we've got. Lakota East defeating Wilmington 53 to 35 in a non-league contest on the uh, Lakota East campus. Dylan Bo Bogard led Wilmington with 10 points. Jarrett Cox led the Thunderhawks with 18. Norwood held off Blanchester 68 to 60. Bland is now six and seven, and Norwood is now five and eight. Lonzo Clark led the Indians with 25, and Jordan Stroud led Blanchester with 22. In others' boys' action, Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy outlasted the Clinton Massey Falcons 63 to 59 in non-league basketball action. The Eagles are now 10 and 3. Massey is now 3 and 9. The Eagles, Mason Bernhardt led all scores with 19 points. Noah Greathouse led the Falcons with 18. In wrestling action, Wilmington defeated Blanchester 47-36 Wednesday in a non-conference tilt. And in that match, uh, there were only actually six matches out of the 14. And all of those, or five of them ended up in pins. The lone match that did not end up as a pin was a 25-10 to 10 tech fall by Sam Eastus of Wilmington over Daniel Davenport in the 106-pound weight class. So congratulations to Wilmington with a victory over Blanitz. Was there any Greco-Roman eye gouges or anything? There were, well, I think it was going to be a steel cage match, okay. but they, they, they <laughs> couldn't find the cage to roll into the, the arena. Uh, but congratulations to Wilmington. Blanchester's a good wrestling program. They have always been a good wrestling program. Yeah, Bland. and that's a, that's a big uh, win for the Hurricanes to knock off Bland like that. Uh, then 
Quakers. We'll take a look at some local college action. The Fighting Lady Quakers posted a 62-51 victory over the Otterbein Lady Cardinals in OAC action. The win keeps Wilmington in second place in the conference with a 7-2 record. Ohio Northern leads the OAC with an unbeaten record of 9-0. Otterbein is 7-9 overall, 3-6 in the OAC. Emily Harmon led Wilmington College with 12 points. On the men's side, Wilmington College men's team defeated Otterbein 87-58 at Herman Court's Fred Risk Arena. The win puts the Quakers at 8-9 overall and 3-7 and in the OAC. Otterbein is 3-10 and overall and 3-7 and in conference play. So that wraps things up. And I tell you, uh, folks, if you want to see some of those games, they are on CampusNation.com. And uh, we've got a lot of the Wilmington College games on there. We do the Wilmington College men's and women's home games. And we do uh, we do have some of the Wilmington High School girls. But we have all the guys' games for Wilmington High School right. this year, except yep. for the last one. They wouldn't let us go down and do that one down at Lakota East. But I tell you, get out and check out these local teams. There's good talent in the area. Sure. Uh, sure. The Wilmington College girls. They've got a nice record going on. Yeah, uh, seven, seven and two. two. And uh, I tell you, another young lady you guys need to check out is Maya Jackson. She is a sophomore guard for Wilmington, and she's already being recruited by some big schools. You see, Ohio State. Very some good. schools are looking at her. And uh, I tell you, it's a lot of fun. And and these wrestling matches too. It's nothing like you see on TV. But if you get a chance to go to one, they're exciting. They're uh, Sometimes they're marathons, and then sometimes they're quick. Like, that one sounded like that was a pretty quick match, yeah. the, the Wilmington Bland. Yeah, it was probably less than an hour. Wrestling match is usually less than an hour uh, with pins and everything. I mean, you're in and out pretty quick on those. So, it's, I tell you, there's a lot of neat local sports. If you can't go catch them live, go to CampusNation.com and check it out. Sure. And also uh, listen to WALH because we're going to be doing some games with uh, WALH yeah, on a lot of Friday uh, nights. Friday night basketball again tomorrow night with Wilmington. What's yep. the uh, game? What's the ma- McClay, Green the Tigers, McClay. baby. You mm. actually think the Tigers are going to come in here? You know what? Uh, uh, the, Wilmington uh, Wilmington beat McLean pretty handily the first time. McLean's hot and cold. Yeah, I tell you what, they they yeah. can come uh, yeah, in. Uh, they can come in and look like world beaters. They beat yeah. Washington Courthouse, and Washington Courthouse was up they thirteen. East Clinton. But Washington Courthouse was yes, up thirteen. On Wilmington at half, and McLean beat Washington Courthouse. Plus, I got some bad news there, Rick. I don't know if you've heard this yet or not, but I guess the the Shaw boy, Jeff Shaw, son, who plays for Washington right. Courthouse, used to be a pitcher. Yeah, 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 I know. I guess he broke his wrist. Oh, uh, so man. he's out. He's out for the year, then. Yeah, that's that. The, I got that Shame. word today from our athletic director over at school, and huh. that's too bad because he is a special kid. Yeah. yeah. Plus, he's just a good kid. You can just right. tell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so, a shame. It's too bad for uh, Jeff Shaw. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, the, the Shaw uh, kid. He's a lot of people don't realize Jeff Shaw does the video for uh, what's the courthouse, the Blue Lights. I tell you another game too. We saw here that you didn't report. On was and it was a barn burner and it's on campus nation too. It was a Chillicothe Wilmington game. Okay. Chillicothe yeah. won in last minute uh, or two. Was and that was on a, yeah, we had it last week. Yeah, it's a great game, right? Exciting game. Oh, definitely. And uh, you know, so Miami Trace is in the lead now in the SCOL. Right. And, of course, we have the Trace-Wilmington rematch will be coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that date is, but it'll probably be here in the next couple of weeks. Right. Know. Well, we've got some exciting things going on here in Campus Nation and TalkTV.us. Uh, Rick Phillips is in the process of hooking us up with some professional sports leagues. It's going to be fun. And we're going to have... Uh, some expanded coverage. We hope to be getting into some arena football, some women's professional football. And, and uh, make that clear that it's not lingerie it's, football. It's, okay? And it is it's, not the lingerie it's league. It's women's professional but football. But this is actual NFL-style football. So if women are playing football, who are the cheerleaders? I'm sure. I'm sure you could do that, Lee. There's guys. You gotta be careful, Lee. There's guys cheerleading. I think all Chelsea over the place Manning here. might be one. Chelsea Manning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you, Bill? Wow, I, did. I had wow, to. Wow. Had to I, yeah, I guess that ended that. But uh, I, wow. I had to drag in the razor's edge on that one. Oh, so, geez. anyhow, love um, that politics. Yeah, but um, 
Yeah, so we've got some exciting things going on. Uh, Rick is yeah. in, in negotiation with um, a professional soccer league, indoor soccer, correct? Indoor and soccer? So, yeah, so you'll be soccer. calling those games, right? Those soccer I games? probably won't be doing that. Okay, but <laughs> just check it. Just check it. Hey, we you did, never know. We did lacrosse last never. year, and we did okay. And I yeah. never know say never. Thing about yeah. lacrosse. I, you know, we're, we're looking at different things. I mean, uh, if anybody knows the history of wide world of sports, and you hear some of Rune Arledge's first stories. Arledge talked about one of the most popular things was the uh, cliff diving championships from Acapulco. Yep. yep. And what they would do is they would go into one, a couple of the local bars, and they would literally give people 10 bucks to compete in this when it started <laughs> out before it had actually taken yeah. place. And so they'd find these guys sitting at the bar that were drunk. And they'd say, here, you want $10 to jump off this 60-foot? <laughs> this, this is why Trump can't build the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have these guys here so we can have them for cliff diving. Well, wow. they dove down there, though. Oh, no, down there. Okay. <laughs> well, how are you going to get them down there if they're already here? Well, 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 free food. Okay. <laughs> here's the here's where you're at here. Remember, we are coming to you live from Fiesta Veracruz. <laughs> That's right. We're not in Veracruz, by the way. <laughs> this we is the Roman. Charlie Hargrave program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got big shoulders, Lee. I can take it, baby. You can handle it, Charlie. Yeah. But you know, the thing about the cliff diving, guys, is, you know, from what I understand, that water fluctuates from six feet deep to 12 feet deep. And they've got a time. They had to time those jumps so that the tide was coming in or a wave was coming in because if they didn't, they, they didn't have much room for air when they hit that water. So you'd be spiked into a, a point there. <laughs> Yeah, pretty. These uh, there's your cheerleaders out there, Charlie. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you, well, you might be just stuck between some rocks when you get Point. wedged in there. But uh, so what we're trying to do on Campus Nation is we're trying to go the route of wide world of sports. Well, we'll find those um, those in between sports, the ones that are not mainstream yes. uh, niche, niche sports, sports and there. not the mainstream stuff. Yeah. We hope to make them mainstream right here on Campus Campus Nation. So well, you know what? One of the some some of the biggest uh, viewerships we've had on Campus Nation has come from lacrosse, has come from swimming, has come yeah, from and, track, rest, and, a wrestling, and wrestling, the non-mainstream well, sports. Yeah, exactly. Right. And we're going to do the SUL swim meet, I believe, and that's going to be January 31st and then February 2nd, I believe, are the dates on that. Okay. okay. So that's going to be coming to you live from the Greenfield Natatorium. Right. So, and, you know, we hope to do things like uh, Ohio MMA and maybe some any of these a big professional wrestling guy and yeah. maybe we will be able to hook up with some professional wrestling possibilities and so you know there could be all sorts Charlie, of we can have a cage match <laughs> uh, yeah, Lee comes go. high off the turnbuckle <laughs> hey we could be we could do, we could do a be Jimmy Snooker versus Don Morocco all over again <laughs> if I can find a ladder to get to the top of the cage no no you can be Jimmy Super. I'll be King Kong Bundy there you uh, go Lee you need to stay away from ladders by I the think way. yeah ladders are not a good thing <laughs> Now, yeah, they have yeah. not been good luck for you. No, they have. Now, look, here's a little trivia for you. What professional wrestler was a history teacher and back in the day? Now we're His talking. name was uh, George Animal Steel. That's right. He was also a, profession, or a football coach. Huh? Yep, George Animal Steel. Yep. Yeah. To intimidate the kids when he came into the classroom, right? Well, I tell you what, my first year of teaching, we had a guy, I don't know if you guys have heard this guy or not, his name is Earl Knight. Okay. This guy stood about 6'6", went about 320, 340. And this is back when you could actually teach school. First day of class every year, every period, he had one kid out in the hall paddling him. <laughs> just to set it exactly. Just to, yeah, just yeah. to set the tone for the year. And you didn't want to be paddled by this guy because he made me look small. Bo. This guy was a huge, huge. Well, you know, I, I tell kids tales of how when I was in high school, you know, the tardy bell, they kind of just – somber along going to yeah. class i said when in my high school when the tardy bell went off kids were diving in the classroom doors because they had all That's the right. coaches with paddles at the end of each hallway and if you were out in the hallway uh -oh. when that bell rang you yeah. heard a crack 
And so nobody was ever late at my high school getting yeah, into classes. There you so, go. I'll uh, tell you, we need more of that. Uh, it would change the attitude quite a bit. We need more of that. We'd make we'd, our country soft. But this, we digress. Why don't we go well, back to no sports flicks. here? So <laughs> let's go back to sports before we get in yeah, trouble. Well, that we could, we might drift oh, in that direction. This is Sports Planet, right? Yes, it yeah. is. Okay. All right, well, yeah. Uh, we're going to have Greg Henning on here in a minute, and Greg's going to be our guest, and we're going to talk um, a little bit about the Hall of Fame election process, Barry Bonds and uh, Roger Clemens are, are starting to make some headway, guys. They are getting some votes towards getting in, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't know where baseball is going to go with this, but I think they've created a conundrum from their, for themselves in the sense that Baseball was on a downhill slope when the Mark McGuire, um, Sammy Sosa, a Sammy Sosa home run derby started. Yeah, and all of a sudden, people started turning out to the ballpark to see these guys oh, play, sure. and so we have this home run derby, and McGuire breaks the record, and then a couple years later, Barry Bonds breaks that record. And Major League Baseball, who's now healthy, turns their back on these guys. Right. And, and I, I don't pretend to believe that Major League Baseball didn't know all along that this was going on. Right. No, I agree. But they needed that. And the two guys that really saved the sport in some senses will probably never get into the Hall of Fame because of that. I don't know, because, like it says, that they're making gains. And i tell you something else that people don't realize, that I think in the next year or two, it's no longer a private ballot. Yes, that's true. You know, sports writers, when they vote, you'll know exactly who they voted for, and that's going to put a lot of them on the yeah, hot seat. Yeah. their whole attitude. Yeah. Think about Bonds and Clements and Sosa, those guys. They've never officially been convicted of anything. So legally, there's nothing there that says you did this or you did that. Now, Whether it's public opinion or not, that could go away against them. Now, is there a chance before midnight tonight that they'll get a pardon? Hey, there you go. There you go. And then That's a possibility. And then they would be cleared uh, of everything well, and they could well, get in the Hall of Fame. Willie McCovey got a pardon. Yes, he did. For yeah, tax. Willie McCovey yeah. got a pardon yeah. today for tax evasion. So. Willie McCovey, he's well, the first yeah, baseman for San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. He got a pardon yeah. from uh, Bill's friend, Mr. Obama. So you never know what you're going to learn here Bill's on the sports planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We found out about cliff diving today. We you found know, about, you know, Willie we, McCovey we, and We've tax, got to hurry before evasion. Greg comes on so we can talk about Ohio State sports. We haven't hit Ohio State sports yet. We actually haven't. Uh, we have not problem. had a chance to talk about it. And usually... There is never a sports planet that Ohio State football is ever uh, ignored. So, hello, gentlemen. <laughs> hello. <laughs> is this the uh, world famous Greg hitting? Well, I don't know about world famous, but uh, he's something. <laughs> Are you in Washington D.C. for the inauguration tomorrow? No, unfortunately, I'm I'm missing out on uh, loads of fun. Apparently. Are you gonna? You know, if you go, Greg, make sure you take some waders. There's some swamp boots. You know, I think I'm going to uh, carry a sign that says, not my president, but then on the other side, it's going to have the not my president flow chart, which says, are you an American citizen? No. Well, then you're not your president. <laughs> okay. Are you an American citizen? <laughs> yes. Did you, do you like him? No. He's still your president. Are you an American citizen? Yes. Oh, like wow. him? Yes. He's still your president. <laughs> well, Greg, we're broadcasting tonight from... Uh uh, Fiesta Veracruz uh, Mexican restaurant here in Wilmington. So it'd be so politically our, correct. Yeah, this is one of our new, yeah. lo <laughs> new locations. And by the way, the food is really good here, Greg. Just yeah, we have for been, your information. We have been partaking in some uh, chips and salsa and some uh, iced tea. Um, Greg, I will do. I will do damage on some tortillas. No, okay. We'll, we'll get you down here sometime for that. Greg, of course, we're joined by the legendary Lee Hendy and Charlie Hargrave tonight. So we're going to have a lot of uh, commentary going on, uh, a lot of crossfire on you. So anyhow, uh, Greg, we just we started in about the um, Hall of Fame ballot right before we got on. What's your feelings? It says that there's a slow uh, change in the attitude towards Bonds and Clemens and the steroid era players. And, and what's your feelings about that being a baseball guy? It's a tough. I 
I don't think they should get in uh, just because they, I think they cheated the first time. It was now a good argument is that they didn't do anything against baseball rules. It was not, uh, you, you were able to use steroids, it wasn't testing. Major League Baseball ball tried to put in testing in like 93, I think it was, but the Players Association vetoed that. Um, you know, my thing is, they let Mike Piazza in, he was under suspicion. Jeff Bagwell is now in, he was under suspicion. Ted Rodriguez was named in Jose Canseco's book for whatever that's worth. Right. Uh, Barry Bonds, he, he's probably the, the most well known. And, well, didn't uh, Tim, didn't even Rodriguez, Tim Raines? Wasn't there some. Sure. And wasn't there some suspicions with Tim Raines, too, at one point? There could. There probably was. I mean, see, most of these guys, there's suspicion if you played in that era. But then you have a guy like Fred McGriff, who there's no suspicion at all. He's not going to get in, even though he hit nearly 500 home runs, I think it was. That should get him in, but because the numbers in that era are so overinflated, a guy like that not going to get in. So I, I, I just have an issue with it all. And, you know, when they're voting Bud Feely, the guy who oversaw this whole disaster, right. then how can you sit there and say that the players don't get in, yet the guy who's in charge gets in? You know, I think Fred McGriff, though, I think he has a chance to get in through, like, the alumni balloting. Yes. Yeah, you know, so. It could be. The old-timers. I think, I think so. Well, you know, I'm looking at this, and it says that Commissioner Bud Selig was elect, elect, elected uh, elected as part of the vet, by the Veterans Committee. And, of course, he was presiding over the steroid era. So it, it, that kind of sends the wrong message when a really questionable commissioner in every sense. He was not considered a strong leader of Major League Baseball. And he's going to be put in the Hall of Fame. I mean, boy, that doesn't send a very good message to the, the players of that era when the guy that kind of tur turned um, a blind eye to everything is going to get into the Hall of Fame. Now, and that's the problem. Is these writers have asked the Baseball uh, Hall of Fame and museum, excuse me, to uh, give them some input. What, what do you think we should do? How should we hold these guys in? They have said nothing on the matter. The base so it's basically up to the baseball writers. They're done, but they do done, but they don't, because no matter what they do, they're going to be criticized, and uh, base, in the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame Museum gets to sit back and say, well, we have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was just, you know, reading along on this, and it's saying that Bonds and Clemens will return next year with newcomers Chipper Jones, Jim Tome, Andrew Jones, Scott Rowland, uh, Johan Santana, and Omar Vizquel. So I think Omar, I think Omar is going to get in. Um, I think Chipper Jones will get in. Tome should get in. Um, you know, I'm still waiting. Jack Moore should have been in a long time ago. Oh yeah, and Jack Alan Trammell should have been in a long time ago. Uh, you know, there's plenty of guys that should get in, but I just don't know. Now, we were just, uh, Charlie brought up that next year the Baseball Writers Association will, uh, their ballots will be made public. So, I mean, you think that's going to have any type of uh, influence on how they vote, if, especially if they vote? unfavorably towards a certain player from a town and they start getting a lot of uh, pressure from the fans? I think so. I think the most well-respected guys like Peter Gammon, Buster Alday, Tim Perkin, those kind of guys, they've made their, and Jason Stark, they've made their balance uh, public for years because they want to be as transparent as possible. This is what I'm doing. This is how I believe. This is, I, I see nothing wrong with that. But there are way too many guys that hide behind the pen. Well, they, they don't have to be held accountable for anything. So I think now, since it's going to be out there, they're going to know what they do, how they feel, and they're going to have to answer their critics whether they want to or not. Um, so I think it's a good thing that we're going to actually see what's going on and why who they're voting for. It'll be interesting when that's made public. Yeah, it will be, and I, I don't know. Um, it's obviously going to make the writers a little more leery about how they vote when they have the protection of, you know, secret ballots. 
Well, i tell you one other thing, too. Before you, I, I, I hate to say this, but before you talk about Bonds and Clemens and Sosa and all these steroid guys, which I don't have a problem really with them getting in the Hall of Fame. If you got, if you let them in, you've got to let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You've got to. I'm sorry he should be there now. And hey, Pete Rose screwed up. He, he admits screwed up. And I really, to this day, think he and Giamatti had a deal. That after, and you know, remember when this happened, Jim Monty died like within three or four months yeah, after right. he suspended him. Right. And and well, no, I think I don't think it's that, Dave. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's anything like that. But I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I think. I think there's a deal that went bad there. I think yeah. Pete and Bart had a side yeah. deal. Yeah. And when Bart died. And yeah, Pete was was up, up the tree with. Uh, yeah, I really do. I think there was a because, actually, I think he offered him if he would admitted everything, it was just going to be a one year suspension, right. been done, over with, move on. But Pete didn't want to admit to it because right. Pete's too proud. You know the thing with Pete Rose, whether you, whether no matter how you looked at it as, from a management standpoint, the guy still had over four thousand hits, and. That's only been done by one other guy. So regardless how you look at it, his accomplishments as an athlete, I say qualify him for the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Okay. You know what? I was there. Okay, I could my, see the hit. His, my problem with Pete Rose is that gambling on baseball is the worst thing that could happen because the 1919 Black Sox scandal almost single-handedly brought down the entire game of baseball. When, you, when, when fans and when people have, can't trust their players, can't trust their managers, then I think that's a serious issue in any sport. So Pete Rose, to me, should never be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Wow. I understand that's a get sore subject. Here. Get, get, get him out of here. Man. Get him, turn him off. Get him out of here. Hang up. Because i tell you what. We can't hear you, Greg. Is, what happened? That I think is, you got cut so, off. That is so <laughs> hypocritical because, okay. you know, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, What's running athletes' athletics right now on a professional level? Yeah. Go to Vegas. There's a thing called a sports book. Oh, yeah. So how yeah. can you how can you lambaste this guy? Granted, right. he did it. He should have got it's in simple. trouble. It's but he should have never, not, Vegas, been, Vegas Vegas never been as Rockets. long of a punishment. Vegas doesn't work. have pitching changes. That's the major difference. Should Pete, never Rose, it, Pete Rose was not the one setting line. He was the one setting on baseball because he had direct control over it. When Las Vegas has direct control over roster moves and pitching count, pitch counts and depth charts and things like that, then come talk to me. Did did uh, did Pete Rose bet for the Reds or against the Reds? He no. He said he never bet against them. He's already he's a, he's a liar. How can you believe what he said? I, I guess gambling. I'm gonna tell you what gambling is nationwide. It's a sport. You go to sport books now, and you can say whatever you want. But if you think uh, he's the only one that's ever thrown a game that's in the Hall of Fame, you're you're crazy. Well, he's not in the Hall of Fame, so there's I mean, that. I know, but well, there, yeah. there are people that are in the well, Hall of Fame that well, have done the same thing. I'm, I'm, sure. gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, that's irrelevant. Pete I'm Rose did it. Pete Rose was convicted of it. So, the, so now we're going to say, well, other guys did it, so then it's okay. No, that's wrong. You can't just sit there and say, because he's your guy, he's your hometown guy, There's that he needs to get in. Bill. Well, he admitted to it. He admitted to it after 20-some years. Pete, Let's not go around and act like Pete Rose is the guy who, who admitted that he was like wrong. No, said, the pressure was finally put on him, and that's when he admitted to it. is on the field when there was no betting going on. Don't now, put him in as a man. Okay, you put so him in as a player. Let me let me throw this in here, and let's let's take this over to another Hall of Fame player in another sport who we don't have. I mean, there's strong suspicion, but has never been proven. Michael Jordan conveniently takes a couple years off from basketball, supposedly because he needed a break, to, and he went and played for baseball, ironically, and then. He ends up in the Hall of Fame, and you know, everybody reveres him as this great basketball player. But he was a big-time gambler. And was he betting on the Bulls? I mean, that, and then now we look at the, you know, the NFL has always said they would never put a franchise in Las Vegas. And we're reading an article right here in front of us exactly. that says the Raiders have filed the move to Las Vegas. So I, what, I guess what I'm saying, Greg, is there a different attitude now because of what happened with Jordan and what's happening with team professional sports teams being willing to move into that market? Uh, to me, these are all completely different topics. If, if it comes out that Michael Jordan did it, then he should never be in the basketball Hall of Fame. It, it, he should, it's pretty cut and dry. 
if he if he admits to it, if it comes out that it happened, then yes, he he should have the same treatment as Pete Rose. I think with putting a team in Vegas, I don't think that has any impact on. Uh, on, on the games. I really don't. I, we have people talk about, well, you can't put a team in Vegas because of the gambling. You can gamble anywhere. And I agree, gambling, gambling is huge all around, all over the world. I completely understand that. But I don't think putting a team in Vegas has anything to do with Pete Rose and how he bet on baseball 30 years ago. Well, I just think the gambling slash sports issue gets dragged up every now and then, no matter you know whether it be baseball or football well, you're, you're or basketball. You're naive to think that it, it's not happening. I don't care who you are. It's just like some of these dudes. You just wonder. I mean, I know they're saying it for the draft, but also in the back of your mind, you got to wonder some of these guys not playing in some of these college bowl games. Yeah, you know, that, that's that could true. show it. That could show a veil of. Uh, you know, suspicion whether whether they did it for that or not. Well, we're not going. Well, to you, can, you can, in court of public opinion, you can suspect anybody of doing anything. But Pete Rose finally admitted it. He did it. End of story. Well, so, Greg, okay, Greg what, he admitted if, it. what about so it, we move on? What happens at eleven fifty nine tonight when Barack Obama gives him a pardon? <laughs> I tell you what, that doesn't matter. He's, he's, he's not in prison, prison for gambling. <laughs> Well, he's going to clear. He's going to pardon him for his gambling discretions. Well, you can pardon a turkey. It doesn't mean I don't want to eat it. <laughs> uh, on another subject, on another player, Greg. I got to get these guys out of trouble. But uh, Ozzy Gian or Ozzy, um, uh, I can't think of his last name. That got me all worked up. But he played for the St. Louis Cardinals. Shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals comes out and Ozzie says. Smith. Dave Concepcion should be in the Hall oh, of yes. Fame. What oh, call? yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Now, that Dave Concepcion retired probably 30 years before I was born, but uh, no, yeah, well. I, I would do this one. No, Dave Concepcion, I think he, my, my thing is the, it's the Baseball <laughs> Hall of Fame. It's not the Hall of Very Good. Dave Concepcion was a very good baseball player. I don't think he was a Hall of Fame. There are a lot of guys who had great careers, but not Hall of Fame careers. Now, okay. if we, you know, and I was just reading about the Hall of Fame, and they're going to consider the eras that these guys came up in. If you look at that, Dave Concepcion was far and away the best shortstop of his era, by far. I mean, in, in terms of hitting, shortstops used to be the guy that you would give up you know, you bring a guy in that could bat 230 or 240 because he had a good glove. Dave Concepcion consistently batted 300. He was a 20 home run guy and, you know, Golden Glover. I, I In that era, he was by far the best shortstop in Major League Baseball. So I, I just, I don't know. I, it, it's kind of hard to say that Concepcion shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, it depends on how you want to look at it. I just don't think his career backs up to other Hall of Famers, and that's just my opinion. Now, being a fan of the New York Yankees and Derek Jeter, let's look at Jeter and let's look at Concepcion. Where would you go with that as if you were going to tell me the difference between those two players? You know, I think just, if obviously I'm biased, and if you compare it, I'm going to say I'm going to take Jeter. <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. But if you ask, if you ask baseball writers like Peter Gammon um, and uh, Buster Olney and guys like that who are much more well-respected than I am, let's just throw that out there, um, they say Derek Jeter is arguably the greatest shortstop of all time. So when, when they start saying that, then, I mean, and Dave Concepcion is never in the discussion for greatest shortstop of all time. Wow, that's hard to believe. But I will say this. I will say that I do believe Derek Jeter belongs in the Hall of Fame, but I think that he and Dave Concepcion are very similar players. And, and you're too young. You, I mean, uh, you, you're your defense. the first person that's ever said that. But Jeter, I think, is for more power, though, doesn't he? I mean, Jeter, he, he, he brought power, too. Already. Yeah. I don't think Concepcion Jeter was a a power. Jeter was a 15 to 20 home run guy. Well, and so was Concepcion. And Concepcion, and let's face it, on both their teams, for the most part of their careers, Concepcion wasn't depended on to be a home run hitter. No. I mean, he was sandwiched between Tony Perez and George Foster and some great players there, as was Derek Jeter, but I don't know. I mean, just, I, I think that uh, Concepcion got lost in the, the shuffle, and right. 
issue. I think so, too. I mean, I'm an Oakland A's fan. I think Burt Campanaris was a great he baseball was. player. He was. I mean, he, he hit for average. He was uh, f- at least 50 steals every year and had a great glove and took the A's to, you know, three straight world titles. I, I think that well, Hall of Fame's going to shook up here. But I think there's a difference between great players and Hall of Fame players. And no, I guess the thing is how you – is it because he hits more home runs, he has more RBIs, he's, his contribution on the teams, how many championships? What is the, the delineation to determine what guys get in and what guys don't? I mean, it's, it's all you, subjective. Yeah. I it's, just, it's just subjective. I mean, it's like we could you know, disagree on Pete Rose for whatever reason, but, but it's just – it's just, yeah, it's yeah. your opinion against my opinion. And, sure. And that's and it's a shame kind of it's actually that way because you, know, you can also hold grudges. And so I tell you what, when these writers start having to make things public, I think you're going to see more people get in the Hall of Fame. And I think this the Veterans Committee is going to bring some of these guys that we've talked about. You know, one thing, what do you guys think about the, you know, the closers? You know, Hoffman, Wagner, Smith, you know. None of them. None of them. May is it closer? Just is it an overrated thing? Is that why? I, I agree. That's an excellent point because Trevor Hoffman was the MLB career saves leader. And now it was only for a short amount of time until Mariano Rivera passed him. But Trevor Hoffman should be in the Hall of Fame. There's, there's no reason that he should not be. It's kind of like DH. Edgar Martinez deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Just yep. because he played DH. How? Because if you look in Major League Baseball. There are plenty of guys that were position players that were god awful in the field, but they were great hitters and they got in. It had nothing to do with their defensive prowess. There are guys like Ozzy Smith and Omar Vizquel will get in, right. who were known for all, their offensive production, but what they did was they were great on defense. That was their thing. So and then now we're going to have a dilemma because they're going to vote in um, David Ortiz, who was steroid suspicion. Who is yeah. only a DH? So you're going to put him in over a guy like Edgar Martinez. I, there's, you're right. It's subjective. There is no right or wrong answer to it. It's just how each each voter feels. And I think baseball has to accept. I think the writers have to accept. The game has changed. The rule was changed to have a DH. So a DH is an official position in the game. So you have to look at that. As there's changes, you have to change the way you view things. You can't view things the way they were in the 1920s. Well, and this isn't a new thing either. How long has the DH been in 1970? Yes, yeah, mid, mid, late 70s right. or early 80s. Yeah, yeah. Designated runner. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rick wants to be the DR, buddy. <laughs> Well, I, I've never been confused for one of those. Yeah. <laughs> How about I be designated bitch warmer? I can do that go. job pretty well. There you go. Um, as, as we go on here, Greg, um, I guess, you know, that's what makes sports talk programs go is because you're able to um, talk about things like this, and obviously there will never be agreement on all that stuff. But Right. Uh, we, Greg, you and I had started talking last week about the Chargers getting relocated, and it came out today that the Oakland Raiders have filed to move to Las Vegas. The, the NFL has really got to look at what they're doing to these cities. Uh, they're just holding them hostage. And, Pretty much. Uh, you know, we talked about they're building these stadiums. And the fans are financing most of it, and then they come in and pull them out. Now, Las Vegas has offered them a 65,000-seat dome stadium. Um, and, and my question is, in the same argument with Los Angeles, is the reason football does not succeed in Los Angeles is unless your team is a Super Bowl contender, they're going to go hang 10 on a, a wave somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. You know, they're going to go somewhere else. They're going to go yeah, to absolutely. Rodeo Drive and and go look at the Hollywood stars if they haven't went on strike yet. So, I mean. Well, absolutely. And, and the owner for the Chargers was complaining this year that his attendance was down. Well, yeah, the attendance was, attendance was down, you moron, because you were threatening to leave the city. Why right. would they support you when you're going to pull out? Why would they spend their money in, on your franchise? Right. Yeah, and here's the thing. So, let's say the Chargers move there. And you have the Rams, <clears throat> who are both mediocre franchises at this point. And what if neither – they're going to have a football game every Sunday 
for 17 weeks or 16 weeks and then say neither teams are any good. When does Los Angeles stop supporting those teams? And are they going to well, already stop supporting them? What? Yeah. And are they going to move them? So then, are we going to be? You know, are we going? Oh, we're going to move the Chargers back to San Diego. I so. never know. Well, money, well, money talks. Is, I'm with you guys. Yeah. It's what? a mess. Yeah, it is. Well, we just put names in a hat and draw names to who goes where. As well, because they're going to move around every five, six years anyway. Well, at least it's not like the overnight move by the the Browns. Yeah. (laughs) Or the Colts. Yeah, or the Colts. Yeah. Yeah. When Ursay decided to load up the Mayflower uh, moving trucks and pulled out of Baltimore. Um, Yeah, I think the thing that, and we've talked about this, and hopefully in the next few weeks we're going to have some commentators on from Oakland and San Diego. But doesn't it get to a point where are there enough markets that and you know this is going to happen somebody is going to file a lawsuit and the NFL is going to have to go to 33 teams and once they go to 33 that means they're going to have to go to 40 so if you want even divisions are there eight are there eight markets that they can expand to and be successful I don't think there are eight markets but I, what I think they'll try to do, they'll try to put another team in Chicago, another team in L.A., and another team in New York. Yeah, that could be. Oh, a Brooklyn Brooklyn Dodgers football team up there. Um, there you go. You know, there are, a, there are a few markets, and I'm not sure that Vegas is one of them. I, I always see Vegas dangled out there, but I don't know that Vegas is any different than L.A. I, it, I mean... Are people going to leave the casinos to go out and and, and watch? No, P. Rose wouldn't. No. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I knew we'd get back to that sooner or later. Yeah, but you, well, hey, no, you know what? It just this all does tie in because it's just it just tells you, you know the world is being ruled. Yeah. You know, gambling. You think about P. Rose's era too with gambling and getting back to that. You know, you didn't have a you didn't have a casino in Cincinnati. You didn't have one in Dayton. You didn't have one in Lebanon. I mean, that's, that's a, true. That's true. It's, you know, the whole world is it's it's changed quite a bit right. to uh, be pro gambling. And I, as far as eight markets, I don't see that happening. I could see him maybe going to thirty six, possibly, but right. I don't. Why I, would, I, I don't. I don't think it why will. Why would they do that when they're playing at least a game every two, three weeks over in London, England? Why well, are they try looking at that market? Well, I think, and I think they were. Tra- I think here? they were doing. That's the reason they were doing it. I think there there was a push maybe to put a team over there. I I just don't see that. Oh, I don't either. Well, I think what happens, and I know Greg and I have talked about this in the uh, in the past. I think what happens, guys, if you put a team in London and in Mexico City. The NFL is going to float those teams for quite a while because yeah. they want that international presence. But, you know, I just don't know. Can, can people in other countries afford $90 to go to an NFL game on a regular basis? How confused are those people going to be over there when they have two different sports, both called football? <laughs> that, well, that's a good point. But, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't see it. I, I think there's a few markets that are still there that could be, you know, um, you look at, I know San Antonio's one that's brought up a bit, uh, quite a bit. Norfolk, Virginia has grown into a pretty big area there. Uh, Columbus has come up, although I, know, I don't know how you guys feel. I don't know. I don't know that Columbus, they would want to challenge Ohio State there because that's right. like a minor league football team for the NFL. Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, yeah, not only the Buckeyes, there's a huge stronghold here with three teams. And even four, Indianapolis a little bit. But you have the Bengals, you have the Browns, and you have the Steelers. So That's true. Columbus, it's going to be hard. I don't know about you, but I live in Columbus, so, but I'm not going to change leagues to Columbus, whatever they whatever they decide. Well, you live in Ohio, and you Steelers still root fan. for the Steelers. So, I mean, what's that tell us? Exactly. Like I'm more intelligent than most of the population. <laughs> Steeler, Steelers, <laughs> dirtiest team in the NFL. Oh. Uh, next to the Cincinnati Bengals. No, wow. I tell you, wow. it should have been hey, two I, hours. I, 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 am, I am. I am. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a second. I am so glad the Bengals aren't in the playoffs this year, just so they can. So Pittsburgh can be exposed. I mean, they're. And I tell you what, Cincinnati is just almost as bad too. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but the Pittsburgh, I the dirtiest team in the NFL. Now, right you know, now. Greg, I will say this about the Steelers. I did defend. Um, 
uh, Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree's hit on uh, on the Miami quarterback. However, now I've, I've been listening to the NFL guys talk about that two point conversion play, and man, the Steelers are getting fried on that one. They're saying ninety eight percent of the time that is not going to be called yet. So why, would, why would you fly the Steelers? They're not the ones who threw the flag. Yeah, you're right about that. It just seems that the Steelers happen to be in those situations a lot more than other teams. I, I, I love the way they handled their coach. Oh, we're going to suspend him for like three days after he gets arrested the night after the football game. <laughs> that guy's a clown. Um, should, oh, they, they should have removed him. No doubt about that. They should have kicked him out. Yeah, but you know, but if you believe in giving Pete Rose a second chance, Joey Porter deserves a second chance. Uh, you know what? Hey, I give I give everybody a second chance. I would, but I tell you, I, that was pretty quick. You know, three or four days, and he was good. Hell, Pete's waited how many years now? It's like Mike Shashevsky's indefinite suspension of his player. That's gonna be a week. It's gonna be a day and a half. There yeah. We go. Well, yeah, you're right about that because they'll control that. Like they said, if they were going to play, uh, say, North Carolina and Louisville. And Kentucky on three consecutive uh, games, there's no way that he would suspend those kids for those games. No, I agree. You know, because there, you, there, you talk about a gambling influence there. Look at UK. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's. My Wildcats. Yeah, hey, you know, that's. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys are too close to Kentucky to start talking trash about John Carroll Perry and all his mess. <laughs> John Calipari. Uh, the, the, Rick, every Rick, time they every time they lose a game, <laughs> Kentucky loses a game. The water level in the Ohio River goes up because everybody's crying. <laughs> well, you know, Rick's uh, Rick's Rick standing here. He's got his off, finger yeah. on the kill button, yeah, Greg. <laughs> I have nothing against Kentucky. I'm just saying, you talk about because what is it about every year? I mean, it's five new players. Well, I, I think I, mean, I think Louisville is right there too. I mean, there's, yeah, they do that. That tends to be a um, a lot of your top programs: North Carolina, Duke, and those guys. They have a lot of turnovers. Something we don't have to worry about: Ohio State with basketball, at least. No. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those guys are like on their eighth year and they won't go away. Yeah. Sometimes I forget that they still have a program. I. You know, I wonder how some how does Ohio State keep some of those guys seven or eight years? I don't know. It's like Michigan, the center of football players. Are they, are are they using like three medical red shirts on when, it? When Mata they say red red shirt shirt retire, shirt. they'll all go away. <laughs> Something's going to happen. We're, uh, Mata has to be on his way out. Of, although they won two in a row. So that's pretty. Yeah, I think I think he'll be gone soon, just because of I think he's grooming Greg Paul to take over. I think Mott is going to be out because of his health has just deteriorated yeah. over the year. I think yeah, so. He's, yeah, he's got health issues. So yeah. leave, leave the poor guy alone. Lee, geez. <laughs> well, I think I, I think for a while there, Mata did get the program. Uh, you know, they were winning the Big Ten. They were getting in. But it, it, there's a definite drop-off. And, I, you know, let's go back to John Cooper at Ohio State. That South Carolina debacle got Cooper fired when they went 6-6 six and six that year. And the same thing's going to happen to Mata if they just don't make the playoffs, they don't go deep into the Big Ten tournament. I think it's probably the end for him, too. Uh-huh. What's your guys' thoughts on Luke Fickle? Do you think he can do anything with Cincinnati, or is that going to be? He's hired some decent coaches to, to go along with the program, but, you know, you still got to give him at least four or five years. Oh, to, I think so, to too. Get, uh, to see what he could do, because you never know what a coach is going to do until he can get his players recruited and in the system. Right. I think the thing with Fickle, and there's been some speculation that he's not, he has interviewed for some other jobs. The reason he didn't get them is because they just didn't, he didn't have the presence right. that they felt he could be a national recruiter. And that's why I think Cincinnati is a good fit for him because they feel that he can recruit Ohio well. And let's face it, I mean, Urban's a national recruiter, right. and he takes the Ohio, he cherry picks the Ohio players. But Urban's going to go after, as Urban says, I go after number one draft choices. And it doesn't matter if they're California, Texas, Florida, I'm going to get the best 26 players. And he's got a lot of talent right in his backyard in Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I, I think Fickle is a logical choice if he surrounds himself by some good football people. Uh, he could. He could make the uh, Bearcats formidable. The smartest thing he did was not take Ed Warner with him. Yeah, yeah. Ed became pretty toxic in the last two years. You know, he's um, that Ohio State offense. Um, 
You know, part of that blame goes, I, I think Ed Warner was a good offensive line coach. And obviously, two years ago, we saw he was over his head as offensive coordinator. And I think Urban should have made a move then. Should have said, you know what, I want you to do offensive line and we got to make a move here. And I, he, out of loyalty, I'm sure he said, I'm going to give you another year. But, uh, and let's face it, we all want it. We all see Ohio State get into the, the playoffs and we're disappointed they lost in the playoffs. They weren't even projected to be there this year. So, anyhow, uh, well, hey, Greg, you know, if you're ever driving through here in Wilmington, and you want to stop by and get some food, I would recommend Fiesta Veracruz. It's a great place. Great place. Everything that has the word Fiesta before it, I'm in. <laughs> well, um, they, they used to have gambling machines here. You could gamble right here. They, 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 they don't now. <laughs> but, you know, it's crazy. I mean, you, you go to Washington Courthouse, go, uh, go over by Mugs and Jugs. You ever been to Mugs and Jugs? Oh, uh, I have not, but uh, I heard it's pretty good. There's a there's a there's a little gambling joint right beside. Sounds it. like a place Greg would take his girlfriend. Well, there was a there was a place in Toledo that used to be <laughs> referred to as uh, grits and something else. Oh. So hey, grits and gravy. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't gravy. I'll tell you uh, that much. Okay. But um, yeah, they they have some good specials here. So if you get a chance, uh, stop on down, Greg and. You, you got you and Charlie can have a steel hey, I'd cage. I'd like to meet him. Steel, yeah, that's steel all, you know, cage match. You know, hey, it's all in I'm fun. not as bad as they sound. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, you are. The only thing, just <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm just trying to bring to your attention that you know gambling's pretty much accepted everywhere, even in small town America now. And Pete, 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 not in the locker Pete, Pete, Pete even in Detroit, has, but Pete has served his time. Yeah. Well, not if it's the right time stuff, if he still has got time on that thing. Well, and I don't think you were on yet, but I said this, I think, before you were on. I really do think there was a deal between him and Giamatti. And if you remember, Giamatti died, like, right after this happened. And I think I think Giamatti was going to let him in, because Giamatti was a smart man. He knew what Pete could bring to baseball, just money-wise again. And then he dies, and there goes the deal. So I, re- I really do believe that. Well, I, think I don't disagree. I think if Pete, if it wouldn't have taken Pete Rose 25 years to finally admit it, I think things would be different. I'd even be less straight. I, I'd, I'd feel different about it, but, you know, he, he's too eager for his own good. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, with the way things go, uh, at some point, Maybe long after Pete's passed away, he will get into the Hall of Fame. It's too bad. Well, if it's out, if it's that late, don't worry about it. Right. But um, also, I, if if Pete gets in, she is Joe Jackson needs to be in. I agree with you. I, I agree absolutely with that. I mean, he was a great player in I'm his not own right. Argue. And I think he should be in. And um, again, Which I, I do <laughs> find interesting though that the whole Black Sox scandal, the team that won the World Series because of that. Yeah. Cincinnati Reds. Well, you know, Charlie went to school with Shoeless Joe. Three yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that one didn't, uh, didn't he graduate two or three years ahead of Shoeless Joe? 657. I, yeah, I can't hardly really understand him. So I'm, I'm not ignoring you on purpose. I just can't understand what you're saying. So, um, Well, guys, let's let's uh, dive into the NFL here this weekend. What's your, think, uh, what, what, what's your thoughts about Green Bay and uh, Atlanta? Go ahead, Lee. I, you know, I, uh, the one team that I had picked to be in the final in the Super Bowl is no longer there, and that's Rick Dallas Cowboys. I thought, sure, they were going to be there. And, uh, the, yeah, the value of Super Bowl tickets went down because the Cowboys aren't there because people were, uh, were betting on them to be there. and Betting? betting. And... Betting. Uh, never mind. We're going to get that started. Again. Anyway. Here we go. Back to the Vegas thing. Yeah. But anyway, I thought that the Cow- it was going to be the Cowboys and the Patriots. But, uh, you know, i tell you what. You cannot discount Green Bay. You know, high Aaron Rodgers gets on that hot streak. He's, he's going to take you to the promised land. Charlie, where, where are you going with that uh, Green, Green Bay, Bay Atlanta Green game? Bay after Green Bay and Dallas last week, Green Bay almost seems destined because I'm like Lee and Rick. I kind of felt like it was going to be cowboy time. Yeah. It's not. And uh, Atlanta's good, though. It's going to be hard to be Atlanta yeah. in Atlanta. That's yeah. the wild card of it. What, what do you think, uh, Greg? I can't stand Aaron Rodgers. 
I can't stand Matt Ryan. I would just play the scoreless tie. But I think I, I think that I'm going to go with the Falcons in the dirty third. Uh, I think they're going to get it done. I think their defense is going to be too good. Uh, they're going to cause some problems for Aaron Rodgers and that suspect offensive line. Uh, they have some tools in the secondary, so I think they're gonna they're not gonna shut them down, but they're gonna make one more stop than uh, the Packers, and I think it's gonna be an eighty point game total. I could see that happening. Eighty um, points, definitely. I've got to go, you know, and I've been hypocritical because back in August when we did our preview show. Uh, we pretty much all agreed it looked like it was going to be um, – well, I think you said it was going to be Seattle and New England, Greg, and I said it was going to be Green Bay and New England. And I've been picking against Green Bay every week now to not get there. Um, I think Atlanta presents some problems, and I did just see the uh, injury report. Uh, the wide receivers for Green Bay are beat up. And uh, they are in some serious trouble going into this game. So, What's the line? Uh, uh, I'm serious. What Atlanta by four. Atlanta, Atlanta by, by four. four? Yeah. So that's just home field advantage, right. basically. Um, so, you know, you look at that, you've got to wonder. Uh, Atlanta looked good, man. They look good against Seattle. They've uh, Dan Quinn's got them playing Seattle defense there, and I, I, they are pretty good. So uh, I'm going to stick with Green Bay only because you picked I them picked them. The year, yeah. But um, be I, I think I have to be suspicious that Atlanta can beat them, although Julio Jones has not practiced this week. So that can be a fa- that could be a big factor for the Falcons. What about the next game? Uh, I don't know. Some team from, you know, southwest Pennsylvania is playing in it, I think. The Pittsburgh, oh, Pittsburgh Steelers. The most ring. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Pittsburgh, New England, what do you guys think? Lee, what do you say? My gut tells me they were count the Pittsburgh Steelers out. And Greg's going to like that. But uh, <laughs> it's a premium matchup, probably the uh, could be one of the better matchups we've seen in a while with uh, yeah, Brady versus Strothlisberger. Both of them are aging quarterbacks, but they're also ageless because they always seem to get it done. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. They're a shocker. Charlie? Ah, oh, geez. I tell you what. I, 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 hopefully the games are going to be as good as they were last week. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I tell you. <clears throat> I, I you know what I'm I I think I'm just going to go to New England Brady at home. That's the only reason it's New England. If Pittsburgh, if they're playing at Pittsburgh, I'd probably pick, pick pick Pittsburgh. But since they're playing at New England, I'll say New England. And I don't know even know why I'm going to ask you, Greg. But uh, where are you going with that one? I think with Tom Brady only losing has only lost three home playoff games. Uh, they have the number one scoring defense. In the NFL, you have a quarterback that has been there, seems like, a hundred times. Uh, the Steelers are hot right now. When they won their last two Super Bowls, it was because they got hot at the right time. Right. Um, I think trying to go into Fox World is going to be very difficult. If any team's going to be able to do it, it would be the Steelers. Um, reports are that the Steelers, they've got a, the flu bug coming yep. through. I have heard um, that. But I, in all honesty, in jail I'd like to week? say the Steelers. I'd have to say the Steelers, but uh, I'm going to go with the Patriots. I think they're going to be too tough. And I, what's this? What's going on with Le'Veon Bell? He's been MIA for a few days. Any? Have you heard anything? I, I have not heard anything about that. Uh, I'm going to go with New England. They, this is their sixth consecutive AFC Championship game, and I believe that. Uh, It'll be a close game. New England and Pittsburgh have only played one other time in the playoffs during the, the Belichick era. Pittsburgh did win that one. So take that for what it's worth. But statistically, New England's defense, I'd have to go with New England on that. But so New England? There's actually two times that they played. Roethlisberger's rookie year, New England came into Pittsburgh and won. Okay. All right. Well, well there's Fiesta, our picks, guys. Fiesta and Vera Cruz is where it's happening, folks. Big yep. crowd here tonight. Good food. You we'll need to back. come out and check out Fiesta we'll Vera Cruz. Hey, hey, Greg, you going over to the casino after this? Hey, man, I'd vote you in the Hall of Fame, too. Okay. Even if you <laughs> All right. Well, that's the wrap here. Well, Greg, thanks for being on the uh, – Campus Nation, Sports Planet, and WALH tonight, and we'll uh, speak with you next week. Thanks, guys. See you.
And that was Greg Henning from Columbus. So for Charlie Hargrave, Lee Hendy, this is Bill Rayback, and you've been watching the Sports Planet. Good night, everyone.